The problem I think that we have had in the past is that there are so many people who think the group lessons are putting kids on headphones and the schools that are, there's people doing it in schools for like $15 a lesson or something like that. And they go and they've got 20 kids in the class and each kid gets like a minute and a half of a lesson. Well, that's not group teaching. Group teaching is when you're actually learning together and you're utilizing the group to learn because the neuroscience says we are hardwired to learn together. And if you are going to do group, you've got to actually make sure that they are learning together. You're listening to the Integrated Music Teaching Podcast from Top Music. Tune in weekly as we interview music teachers and experts from around the world to explore creative activities and ideas that build learning connections in students. Our integrated music teaching approach will deepen your students' understanding of musical concepts, engage them in critical thinking, improve their reading and performance, foster their curiosity, and prepare them for a lifetime of music making. Tim Topham here and welcome back to the Integrated Music Teaching Podcast from Top Music Co. And a special welcome to all my Top Music Pro members. It's great to be with you for another week and thank you so much for giving me this small bit of your listening time in what is, I'm sure, a very busy day. At Top Music, we just love guiding and supporting music teachers like you to engage, motivate and inspire your students and to run the most sustainable studio business possible using our IMT system. And uh, today's episode... We're continuing our theme looking at group teaching with an interview with two people who've been on the show before, actually, uh, and who I'll introduce you to in just a moment. Before then, I wanted to share another fantastic podcast review. This one's from Rachel Maria Cox from Australia. She said, I recently have been binge listening to this podcast after discovering it online, feeling very close to burnout and looking for ways to renew my passion. Tim has absolutely changed the way I view my business and my teaching, and I have so many creative ideas to implement leaving me inspired and ready for the new year. Perfect not just for piano teachers, but all musicians. I actually teach piano and voice and manage a studio. Thank you, Tim, for all the amazing content. You have gained a listener for life. Thank you so much, Rachel Maria Cox. Now, unfortunately, we can't see emails when you leave reviews. So, Rachel, if you are listening to this episode and you recognize your review, please reach out to our support team, support at topmusic.co, so that we can forward you a thank you gift. It's amazing to read reviews like this, and I'd like to start reading out a few more of these each week. Uh, We'll be randomly choosing them from anyone who shares a review during the week. So if you could spare five minutes to leave a review, I'd really appreciate it. It not only helps us be found by more teachers, but it also gives us a much better chance of achieving our mission of more children and adults learning music and sticking with it for life. Now, if you're not sure about how to leave a podcast review, it is really, really simple. And we've left some instructions step-by-step over at topmusic.co slash iTunes. The first of my guests today is successful Australian businessman, Paul Myatt, who's also well-known for his ability to teach and educate all levels and abilities in a diverse range of skills from music to swimming. Paul is the founding director of Forte School of Music, a unique and highly successful music education network with over 4,000 students in Australia, New Zealand, and the United Kingdom. Paul's greatest passion is encouraging lifelong music making through music education and the positive effect this has on people's lives. My other guest today, Gillian Erskine, lives with her family in subtropical Brisbane. Inspired as a young teacher to find better ways to teach music than her early musical upbringing, Gillian founded Forte School of Music and Piano Teaching Success. She has co-authored best-selling Easy Learn theory books aimed at making theory fun and is a pedagogical composer for piano specializing in beginner to intermediate levels. Gillian and her team work passionately to help piano teachers around the world engage, motivate and accelerate success through whole body learning and making music fun. Welcome back to the show, Paul and Gillian. Great to have you both with me. Thank you so much, Tim. (laughs) <laughs> so where do we start? I, I, was, I was going to say, you know, just in case people aren't familiar with you guys, I, I, I don't think there'd be many in the audience who haven't heard of you, but you do so many different things um, in the music teaching kind of industry. So can you give us a quick rundown of all the different ways in which you're helping teachers at the moment? Sure. Well, as you know, we've always been passionate about teaching and about the benefits of music education and the impact that we have in other people's lives in, in helping them learn piano. Um, um, but the problem has always been, and this is what we've always been trying to solve probably our whole time piano teaching life, is too many kids quit, you know, and it's so sad because uh, it means they don't go on to enjoy those benefits of playing music as an adult. As an adult. 
But for us, and for us, it means losing students, it means gaps in our schedule, it means having to find new ones and, you know, that kind of thing, which can be um, a struggle at times. Um, but, um, yeah, so 30 years ago, we developed whole body learning to make it more fun and, um, and to engage more learners and to make it more interesting and to really access more, for everyone to access more learning. Because, you know, I was that little kid. I was the reluctant reader. I always gave up, you know, and um, as a young teacher, I was a little looking for ways to not be like my teacher, (laughs) my initial (laughs) teacher was, because she was strict. (gasps) Is it funny? I reckon reckon music teachers go down one of two paths. It's either I'm going to stick to how I was taught because it's the only thing I know or God help me if I teach like my teacher, I've got to find a new path. (laughs) I was that one. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Trying to find your eyes, right? But there must be a better way to doing this than the way I learned. We've got to do, we've got to find something. Um, and then after a little while in teaching piano, I also thought, hmm, if I'm going to continue teaching piano uh, as my career, if I'm going to make this in my career, because I wasn't going to do it. I was just doing this while I decided what my career was, but I actually liked it. I thought, oh, this is quite good. But, oh, hang on a minute, I need to find a way of earning, you know, earning more to have the lifestyle I want. And I'm thinking, if I have to teach private lessons to earn the lifestyle I want, I, I'm going to be dead. <laughs> It'll kill me. <laughs> so, um, so I started, that's where I started looking for, I thought, mm, group piano, but how can you do it? So, yes, yeah, so that's when I went down the group piano route and then Paul and I, we found that, that way of teaching that really turned us on. And then How, how did you guys get to be working together? Oh, we met when my my husband. My I don't husband think I ever here. asked how you oh. met you two. Now, and for people listening, I'm not interviewing a couple here. I'm interviewing business partners. You are very close you friends. Are. Yeah, I got a I got a husband, another husband. I got this yeah. is one husband. <laughs> but I don't think I've ever asked you how you originally started working together. Well, funny you should ask that. Go, Paul. Because I actually taught with Gillian's husband back in the 80s um, because he actually had studied at the Conservatorium in Queensland and was a clarinet and uh, woodwind teacher and I was teaching brass because I was originally a French horn player. And so that's how, and he actually introduced us when I was playing the piano at David Jones. David Jones. (laughs) Ah, the David Jones story, I do remember that somewhere from the history. Gillian, does your husband still teach or do musical things? No, 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 no. He was on his way at that time when they met um, doing a law degree. So he's, he's ah, in law. Okay, right. And then you guys both realised your kindred spirits had the same goals for music education and you came together and formed Forte. Yes. Which must yes. be how, and how long ago was that? 29 years ago, can you believe it? Wow, 30-year anniversary. Well, actually, we, probably came, we came together 30 years ago when it launched 29, in 1994. Amazing. I was free, of course. <laughs> 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 so we're going to come back to Forte because obviously that forms a part of what we're talking about with group teaching because Forte is a group teaching uh, program. Uh, it, was it always right from the beginning that you were working with group teaching? Yep. Yeah. More recently, you've been working with teachers on piano teaching success and been doing a big group focus there as well. So uh, how did that come about? Well, we wanted to, so we were actually working with teachers in piano teaching success to teach them with whole body learning. But there just seemed to be so much interest in, in the group piano. And we know from teaching group piano that you need to have the right result, you need the right approach, you need the right group specific approach, something that you just can't taking a off the bolt, bolt, uh, shelf book and try to teach it in piano in group is just like, so I don't know how you do it. And then, then you've got um, you need proper group teaching strategies and you need um, resources, you know, the proper resources for the kids to have. It's really a whole thing you need for that. So we thought, hmm, we have always wanted to have um, an entry-level program or, um, for Forte and so that piano teachers can do what I wanted to do when I was back teaching privately and wanted to step into I wanted to step into having my own music school. I was always that entrepreneurial piano teacher when I was young. But um, you just many teachers just want to step one step further and go into the groups. And, uh, yeah, so we um, decided to develop a program specifically for um, studio teachers that just want to go that next level. As a start, some might will then want to go on and go, no, I want, and I want to take it further. 
Um, but, you know, way back when I was young, I didn't have the resources to start my own school to start with. So I needed to take it one step at a time. So that's what this program is for. And we're going to come back to talking a bit more about that program and what you offer and some tips for teachers. So I really want to make this as practical as we can with some tips and ideas and answering questions about group teaching because I know there's lots out there. Uh, but you also have another business, which is retail sales, I think, BlackRock. Uh, what else am I missing? Because you got I don't know how you guys do all this stuff. <laughs> well, <laughs> we have a team. <laughs> Black, BlackRock is our online music um, shop and we wanted to make it easy uh, for teachers to purchase um, piano music. I don't know if you've been to many. Um, there's there's so few piano or music shops and it's really hard to find anything. But also the online stuff, online stores, a bit like a dog's breakfast to find anything. So we wanted to make it easy for teachers to find materials that they would need for teaching. Mm, great. So that's why we created it. Yeah, and it all works together super well. You mentioned that group teaching, you, you've, you've all, always had a focus on whole body learning. And I know, Paul, you've taught me lots about ORF and Kadai and all these different styles of teaching. And you've brought lots of these ideas together and made them your own. I think it's fantastic. But you've said that group teaching has become, you've been getting more questions about it recently. And it's interesting. I've noticed the same thing. But you've been running group lessons for 30 years almost. Uh, I've been blogging about it, podcasting, interviewing people for at least eight um, why do you think it's become popular again or, or it's being talked about again now in this climate in the last six months? I think it's really exploded again. Yeah, uh, well, I think, um, I don't know. I don't know whether we've got a new generation of teacher coming up that's a little bit more entrepreneurial um, and wants to just extend further. I think um, most piano teachers tell us they just want to, they want to earn more. And they are teaching piano and I think they're finding that the one-to-one -one lessons, you know, it's, you've got a fixed income for that period of time um, and I think they want to expand expand their horizons a little bit more and create a better lifestyle for themselves. It's not um, as easy as it sounds though. You don't want to just go, I'm going to do group teaching and then do it. It's actually a lot of work. You can crash and burn. <laughs> if you do that, you can crash and burn. <laughs> Because you know you've got to have you've got to provide value. You've got to have a program that our kids want to come to. You've got to have teaching. You know, it's got to be parents have got to see this is a great program, value for money, not just chucking kids on headphones and going around and visiting them. Yeah, three. It's not a three minute lesson. Mm, yeah. The, the the problem I think that we have had in the past is that there are so many people who are, who think that group lessons are putting kids on headphones and. Um, the schools that it, there's people doing it in schools for like $15 a lesson or something like that. And they go and they've got 20 kids in the class and each kid gets like a minute and a half of a lesson. Well, that's not group teaching. You know, uh, group teaching is when you're actually learning together and you're utilizing the group to learn because the neuroscience says we are hardwired to learn together. And so it, if you are going to do group, you've got to actually make sure that they are learning together. Mm -hmm. So let's talk about some of those pros and cons. Let's talk first from the student side. So pros and if there are any cons that you've experienced from the student side, and then we'll talk about the teacher side. Well, I suppose from the student's perspective is one of the big pros is they get to learn with their friends. Or yeah, make new <laughs> social, right? It's social. Yeah. It's got to be. a good. And the other thing about the social is, we have an in, you know, with kids, we have an inbuilt uh, challenge in that they want to be so you know, the big, a little bit of a challenge between all of the kids at who's going to be the best in the class. And so yeah. you've got some <laughs> built in competition. competition. Mm. Yes. So the built in competition. It creates momentum in a class. Uh, and, and that's really uh, one of those things that it's not, it's quite, uh, not intuitive, but the kids in the class we find actually progress quicker than kids in private. So we've had kids in classes and for whatever reason they've had to go to private or they've chosen to go to private, thinking that's going to be the better option for them. And then after about three to six months ago, uh, actually, that's not working out so good. Can we go back to class? And we've had to say, I'm um, sorry, you can't go back to that class because they've gone on too far. Ah, interesting. You've got to go back to a different class, yeah. I think there's so, probably also an element in there of... 
uh, when you're playing out loud, you, you need to be prepared to play for like maybe the parents are listening or the rest of the students and it's your turn to play out loud and you need to prepare for that because it's going to be embarrassing if you're not very good kind of thing. Do you reckon that's one of the motivating factors? Yeah, definitely. And I think within that, um, we have a sort of a thing where about, about every two weeks they have a concert piece ready to perform for the group. So it's building, not only is it creating momentum that they need to practice because they've got a concert coming up, but also they're developing those performance skills that in as a pro, um, gosh, I don't think I ever got to perform. If I did, it was a very, very stressful event. It was either an exam or an estead fit, right? Or oh, maybe my maybe the auntie auntie Felly, <laughs> you know that sort of concerts. Show her, show them how good you are, darling. <laughs> so that kind of thing. Um, so yeah, and it. Um, but these kids are just, and that's only once in a blue moon. Whereas these kids are playing every couple of weeks. So yeah, there's a momentum again going on with that class. I suppose one of the cons would be is that. Um, some children who have a learning challenge, they at class may not be suitable for them. So that is that is a possibility. But on the whole, most kids um, do achieve quite well in a in a group environment if it's taught uh, effectively. Uh, and I think one of those other elements that are missing in the one on one lesson, unless the student or sorry the teacher uses backing tracks or drums or plays along with them is that sense of playing together with other people, keeping in time, uh, not dropping beats and things like that, because you get that opportunity all the time in a group class to practice that skill of musicianship, which pianists don't often get. No, rarely get. That's right. They absolutely do. And I think they get to play with the backing track, but they also get to, and the backing track is particular, absolutely in time, uh, they also get times to play without the backing track, with each other, without the backing track, and there's that still that little pull that they have to sometimes adjust to. And, um, yes, and uh, it, like in a Rallentando section that they'll all be listening intently <laughs> and then picking up the pace together and finishing exactly on time. Yeah, those points. Great. And one of the key elements of whole body learning is using the voice, so singing. And in a classroom, class situation or group situation, there is safety in numbers. They will sing. <laughs> they sing together. <laughs> they will sing together, and, but they, they won't sing by themselves, <laughs> but they'll, they'll quite happily sing together. And so you can get that oral development happening very easily. Yeah. All right. So let's talk from the teacher side, some pros firstly, and then any cons that you can think of. Well, it's rewarding is to see your kids thriving and just bowling in. I mean, goodness, they just run in the door, can't wait to be in there, and they're la 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 the energy is just infectious, so it's so much fun. And, of course, you can earn more, time, more money, you know, more in less time. Definitely there's that one. I was going to say that with the first one that Gillian just said, my kids come half an hour earlier. The, like I've got kids <laughs> that are grade seven. They've got all their their big school bags and they they just take over the whole corridor because they come half an hour early to chat and socialise mm. before they come to music. <laughs> That's great. Mm -hmm. And, yes, Paul did just say grade seven group classes. Yes, he does teach high-level grades. It is possible doing that as well. We might come back to that later on if we have time, Paul. Um, so, and definitely that, that uh, business structural side of things is, is a big one. Um, from the teacher side. What about any sort of downsides? Obviously, there's the cost if you need to invest in instruments, depending on how many you need. There's also the time factor. This will take you some time. Any Anything else you can think of? Um, there's certainly the um, training and, and, as you said, of that kind of thing that they need to do. Set up costs and... Marketing. They've got to do lots and lots of marketing and advertising. The challenge with group teaching is often kids don't drop out because they're not good enough. They often drop out because they're too good. So you have to have a pathway for those talented students. And it might only be a short time that they're talented for, but they will drop out very quickly. So you need to move them ahead into another class. So you need to have a feeder of students coming in all of the time. So the only way you're going to do that is through marketing. Mm. 
And you need to have several students at the same, sort of around the same age group at the same time to start a class. You know, in a private situation, in private teaching, one person rings up, yes, I can put you in here. And one person rings up, oh, yes, I can put you in there. But you'll need to have, you know, four, depending on how many students you've got in your class, four, five, six students, even eight students, if you're teaching that bigger classes, all at the same age, all at the same, the inquiry is coming at the same time or around the same time to start your class. So you do need to do that. Yeah, that would be a challenge, I'm sure. Uh, but I also imagine you can start smaller and grow. You don't need to go to eight straight away. You could start with. Oh, no, 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 no. We would suggest you do that. <laughs> yeah. Good idea to start with four to four or five. Three or four or five. Yeah. 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 Three, four, and five. Also, there's going to be a lot of preparation as well. So, and changing. People hate change at the best of times. So this is often a really big change for people. So it's also going to require a really good mindset because the first time you do it, I remember watching a video of myself um, t teaching back in last century and going, oh, my God, <laughs> how bad was that? <laughs> and so the just the learning process of learning how to be a good group teacher takes time. And so there's going to be time spent on lesson preparation as well. Yep. You certainly have, you have to be uh, flexible, open to learning. I think these are all, you know, growth mindset, all that kind of stuff. Growth mindset. You're going to take this on. Yeah. 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 So what are be some of those um, big questions that you get? You probably get a lot of the same questions coming through quite regularly. Have you got a top two or three that you could answer now? Because I'm sure there's teachers listening to this going, oh, well, it's, that's great, but uh, this is my question. Well, the biggest one is usually how much money am I going to make? And okay. that's, like, <laughs> that's not what I expected. All right. How long is a piece of string? That's a bit, it's always a big one. Um, how long is a piece of string? You can make, it depends on what style of group teaching you do and your all the things that impact that. So what size room have you got? Um, what syst sort of system are you going to use? What methodology are you going to use? So that is really dependent on what what you're going to do so it's really helpful to go and find out some more information and i'm actually speaking at NK, nckp about group piano uh oh, with cool. quite a number of other people yep. and um, ckp in july chicago yes i'll yes. be there as well looking forward to oh, it oh fantastic Great. yeah and uh um group piano we're also eliminated we're doing it. We're on. Uh, we will be also speaking in Group Piano Illuminated, which is an online conference in uh, yes. June, July this year. Yep. As well. So we're doing that kind of thing. But um, I think the other question, the question that I had burning in my mind when I was young, and I think it's still the number one thing, is like, how do you do this? <laughs> like, how, how, where do you start? Like, how can you make it work? And I think this is because they've never, you know, they've always learned privately that like most of us start a group, uh, started teaching piano. And even if we didn't want to teach like our piano teachers were, we started out just teaching as our piano teachers were and started looking for different ways of doing it. But we think, but we don't have anything. There's nothing in our background that, that prepares us for how do you do this? Generally with most people. So I think, um, and I think quite a lot of people think might feel that it's a money grab and that they have to sort of compromise on quality, uh, qu quality um, to get quantity, but that nothing really honestly could be further from the truth, you know, that there's quite an investment of time and effort you need to put into this to get good at it. Um, once you're good at it, you won't ever want to do anything else. But um, it does take a while to kind of figure out how to do it or, or learn how to do it. Yeah, that's often a concern for parents too. They would see the group thing as being less of a pedagogically sound thing than a one-on-one -on -one, right that's a that's an argument you would have to make and be confident about with if if you are you've already started one-on-one -on -one and you're considering changing you need you need to have concrete sort of arguments about that ready i would say yeah we would recommend that teachers start really just with brand new classes start with brand new students in their first classes Hi everyone, I wanted to take a moment to let you know about an amazing community of music teachers ready to welcome you over at Top Music Pro. Top Music Pro is the global hub for music teachers looking to connect, learn, grow and be challenged in both their teaching and studio businesses. 
Community members save time by accessing hundreds of step-by-step lesson plans, creative teaching frameworks, business guides, online courses, and workshops. We offer training in topics as diverse as music technique, lead sheets, website building, intermediate repertoire, group teaching, and special needs teaching. We also save you money through our extensive discounts, including those with Music Notes, Sheet Music Plus, Music Room, Office Depot, Tonebase, and many more. And if you like sheet music, all our members get a free book of studio licensed, beautifully engraved sheet music each and every month. As a valued podcast listener, you can check out the Top Music Pro community free for 14 days by heading to topmusicpro.com, clicking join now on our studio tier, and using the special coupon code IMTPOD23. That's all one word. So that's IMTPOD23. We can't wait to welcome you inside. Oh, okay. So for teachers listening who are teaching one-on-one now, rather than trying to convert those people across, just bring on new people as they start into classes. And there's a few there's a few reasons for that. One is that the kids in classes actually learn a whole breadth of um, skills that the kids in private don't have. So the kids in private, pretty good at playing, pretty good at reading, pretty good at theory, but they don't have really good playing with other skills. They don't have very good listening skills. They don't have, there's lots of skills that they don't have that that um, the kids, they don't have chord playing skills. They don't have just lots of things of, of skills they don't have that in group, that group piano kind of requires. So it's just sometimes easier, at least initially, to start with brand new students and then teach and you learn and they learn all together at the same time. Right. And I think we should also cover one other big question. Uh, we've, we've, there's kind of two main schools of thought with group teaching in my experience. We've talked about the first one, which is ensemble playing versus headphones. And I think we've talked about what we believe in that one. The other one is multi-age groups versus single age or single level groups. So what's your preference on that one? Uh, and do you think both could work depending on the circumstance we don't necessarily have multi-age we have um sorry sorry we don't have single age we have single level and so for example my classes that go up to i've got kids up to grade eight but there might be a, a kid who's two years younger in that class which is i do have in that class so it, it really depends on the level we prefer to go all move together when it when you have a child that is ahead of the the group then just move them ahead um and we find that that's a really good way of operating um multi-level classes are incredibly difficult to manage like i i reckon i could probably do it for maybe 10 weeks or something like that but after that you've just got to keep you have to keep getting new material all the time because you can't use standard material um, because there are some people that do it and it's not what we I guess they probably have different goals Uh, we yeah so uh, what makes sense to us is single level um, where everybody is where we're using the momentum of the class to for um, everybody to refine them you know lobby um, refine their skills and get better and better and better everyone moves together mm. i mean it probably it would make most sense to teachers teaching one-on-one in that structure to move to just more people at the one-on-one st- at the same stage that makes more sense i can see the benefits of multi-age but i can also see as you've mentioned paul there's a lot of a lot of struggles there potentially exactly well the other thing with multi-level i think it'd be the perfect thing to do if you were doing group with all your new beginners but once a month you could put all of your kids who are multi-level into a class, into a group and have a le- lesson together. And then you would work with them on their parts or in the ensemble or whatever they're doing together. So there, there's definitely uses for it, um, for that style of teaching. There's nothing wrong with it. Um, I just find that in terms of like for long-term work, it might be a little bit challenging. Yeah, and we were interested in like, you know, the same kind of, um, you know, kids doing exams, kids, all of that kind of stuff. It, I think it'll be hard. Uh, hobby students that are coming along, let's just learn a, a, a piece this week and a different thing this week that are sort of smorgasbording their way through. I can see how that works for that. I mean, we're probably the wrong people to ask about multi-level because we've just been we've specialised in single-level classes our whole lives. 
Yeah, no, that's that's great. Well, I've got another episode coming up with multi-level people, so it's it's great to get okay. both both sides of the story. Uh, so, look, I'm I'm interested to sort of move on to hear what you have created because, as I said, we said at the start, you've been running group classes for thirty odd years. You guys know how this is done. I've seen you in action, Paul. You've shared so many videos of your teaching. It's so much fun. It's so cool. The kids are singing, they're tapping, they're chanting, they're on the floor and then they're at the instruments and the parents are there and it's amazing. So, but now you've actually released this. So originally your approach was something specifically only Forte teachers would be able to use. But I believe that you're now sort of expanding and saying, hey, we've got this curriculum and anyone can use it now. So do you want to tell us what you've done? Sure. Um, so it's not really, a, it's, it's kind of a change, but it's not really a change. It's just that we've expanded. So, yes, our Forte schools remain our top tier and our owners are very special to us and they're very entrepreneurial and they have a large vision for what they want to create in the world and the impact they want to have on others. Um, but, yes, la late last year we took our very first intake in of accredited group piano teachers into our um, program. And, um, yeah, so we were training them and supporting them to start and then launch and then to grow their piano um, program. And um, like, and people, and we've got teachers like Vanessa, who actually Vanessa we met Munz. at Piano Pivot. Yes. Oh, we Vanessa. met Vanessa yeah. at Piano Pivot Live just before Fantastic. COVID. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And, um, and she was contacted by a school who wanted to offer piano lessons in the school. Like Vanessa, for those of you who don't know, uh, uh, lives in a remote region. Wheatbelt region, actually, of WA. Um, she's three hours drunk inland from Perth. Uh, it's just farmland <laughs> everywhere. And um, she wasn't going to do the, uh, she could only do one day a week with them. At the, but there was this school, they needed, I don't know, 40, 60, 120 kids taught. So she thought, okay, group, group piano, that's the way I'm going to do this. And so, yeah, so she's now, I think she, she probably earns more income on one day than she does for the rest of the week. <laughs> we were working it out late last, late last year. Oh my goodness! <laughs> um, yeah. So, and um, and also there's teachers like um, Philippa from Durban in South Africa, and she's just loving. She's actually teaches. She's a music teacher, music specialist in a P to twelve school um, in um, Durban, and um, she's decided to implement this program in her with her little ones in the school because she has to teach um, classes and they need certain outcomes and they've got concerts to do and and that kind of thing. She's just loving the amazing musical skills her kids are developing and they're thriving and parents are loving it too. They came for a lesson. Uh, parents came in to have a look-see and she she taught them a piece last week and they just loved it. So, yeah. It really keys in for Philippa to the band program because all these kids have now got all these musical skills and they can go straight into the band program. The band teachers only need to teach them the technique of the instrument because they can hear, they can sing, they can play in time. They've got all these skills. So it makes it so much easier for the teachers as they go further on. Yeah, even the uh, even the deck, other other teachers are loving it because we have a a, a, um, a program called Brain Gym that we actually movement based um, system through our courses, and they're loving it. They're loving that the kids are learning this stuff to really um, focus them and bring them in, uh, concentration into play as well. So, yeah, no, it's been great. So it sounds like it works for teachers who are currently teaching one-on-one -on -one but want to go to group or that are in schools, in their own studio, in music schools, like it can work in a variety of levels. What kind of things would I get if I joined this? So am, I, am I picturing books that I refer to or videos and the books I give to the kids or how does it actually work? Well, we basically have everything for you. So that's the complete sort of package um, from all of the music books for the kids through to the backing tracks. But most importantly is the teacher training. And I don't know about you, but if you've received a lesson plan that includes some movement activity, and we know the importance of movement and movement is the key to learning. And you try to understand what the lesson plan said and gone, I don't understand what it means. I've got no idea what this means. 
Yes, and I have that so we have videos <laughs> of every single piece in our um, beginner courses. So there's no chance to get it wrong. It's all done for you. And that sort of material is just so useful. And it means that teachers can go from zero to 100 so much more quickly than they would otherwise. Because if you have to learn how to do it, and you don't, and you're making it up as you go, then it just takes so much longer. Well, it also takes so much time. <laughs> yeah, of course. You and so, hours every week trying to figure it out. And so you'd be able to start. Let's say in Australia, we we use the exam system quite often. So let's say you've got three kids at grade three level. Would I be able to jump in and find the stuff that will work for that level and? just be able to kind of step through it, watch the videos, then be like, yep, all right, I'm going to go and run this class. Is that what I'm thinking? That, it's not as easy <laughs> that because at grade three level, that's like an intermediate level student. They don't have, if they've been learning one-on-one, -on -one, they don't have all of those precursor skills um, that, so they could come together, you know, a, I would work with the teacher to work out a strategy forward and within 12 months, those kids might be working together, but they've got to build a whole heap of music skills to be able to do that. Because if they don't have the music skills, they're not going to successfully learn in a class. Right. They, surely these are skills. We keep talking about these skills that aren't taught in one-on-one, -on -one, that are taught in group or a group program such as yours. Surely they should be taught in one-on-one. -on -one. Why isn't that happening? Well, well if you use something like whole body learning. <laughs> They do do that in the studio. <laughs> so we, we, yeah, we have a program called the Studio where um, teachers can use whole body learning in a one-on-one -on -one situation, and then they introduce in the ear training and the chords and all of those skills that we are doing in class. They can do on one-on-one. -on -one. That just sort of slightly adjust it and do it in a slightly different way than what you would do it in a group. For example, singing. We don't really, you know, still kids don't want to. It's safety in numbers of the group that you can do an oral de development program that way. We just switch it around and do it a slightly different way. So, yeah, so in the studio we do teach um, teachers how to do the one-on-one, -on -one, um, the develop their skills and the private lessons. But studio. generally kids won't, like you say, sing and they look at you and go, are you kidding? <laughs> I, yeah. I push it. I've always pushed it. It's hard, but, I, yeah, I know I know what you mean. So you're saying that if you... Okay, I'll give you the greatest tip that I is. Kazoo, I love kazoo. He's... The kazoo. Yeah. This yeah. might, the best tip I can give you is to get kids to sing the kazoo. Yeah. Where is my kazoo? I've got one somewhere here. <laughs> <laughs> um, and we want to hear you play the kazoo thing. I'm sure you don't. Uh, I, I, so, so what I'm understanding is if you're teaching, one-on-one -on -one teaching is a whole body approach and does involve singing and tapping and rhythm and chanting and all of those things that we know are important, then moving to a group program that you offer will be slightly easier because there will be elements that students already know. But if you're coming from a really traditional classical approach that's about reading, performance, and interpretation, there's going to be a lot of work to do. Yeah, if you want to transition those kids across, yeah. Yeah, okay. And the other thing about you can still do all that classical training in a group. You don't, I mean, as, as you mentioned before, you know, like I've got kids up to grade eight. You know, one of my students got 98% for his grade eight. Um, Trinity College, so they can do that, um, but it you just, it's just a, a different approach to getting to that end point. Well, because when they when they do all of these skills at the ear training, when they learn to play with backing tracks, they learn to play. They hear the idioms and the various different styles of music and what have you. So they've got a real feeling for stylistically interpreting music and everything. And the chords are underneath their hands so that they learn quickly and if they make a mistake, they've got a great ear and they've also got the chords under it so they can kind of work their way through. So, you know, kids when they, and they progress quickly when they go, if they've got all of these skills under their belt. I phrase it, my, my son's class, grade six. So he taught, decided that um, he didn't like his one of the pieces, so he wanted to, he taught himself, go tell it on the mountains. It's so, a um, piece in the blue book um, for two weeks before the exam. I went, you can't change your piece two weeks before the exam. I oh, learn, learn it. Okay. So we learn it. 
He went in, played it in the exam by memory, and then um, he made a few little kind of, I was, I could hear him playing, you know, and his mother. <laughs> and I'm thinking, oh. he, he, he recovered. He didn't, we didn't miss a bit. He just kept on going. I'm thinking, that's a little bit strange, that chord there. Um, anyway, um, he got an A plus for that exam. And in the comments on the, all of the children were how musically they played, how stylistically correct their interpretations were for the various pieces that they played. So yeah, these are kind of those skills that the kids get in class when they learn in this way. And I, th- I think one of those skills is also learning chords and learning harmony in a classical environment. There are no chords written above the music. <laughs> so learning those chords, because once you have those chords under your hands, then it makes it so much easier to learn. Can I give your listeners one example of this? Yeah, please. I was going to say, any... well, if you've got a couple of quick ideas, let's, let's do them. <laughs> well, this is a very simple activity. So that painter scale, you can then put chords with it. Or you could do it the other way around. So with my older students, we do. But then when we come down, we go. Uh, you got to think yeah. to do that. <laughs> and then you can, that to you can extend, extend it even more, you can do a, a different inversion. So a first inversion. Uh, or, uh, and you can do it in your right hand. Or, so once you start doing that, you just get all this harmony in your head. But if you do it in all the keys, your hands are just so going to fall under the finger. So anything sort of classical, romantic, um, certainly contemporary is going to uh, probably find itself, be just all sorted uh, with those sorts of exercises. Not so great for your two-part or three-part inventions. They're just hard. There's no way to make them much easier. Yeah, there's no way. That's exactly right. <laughs> oh, I totally agree with that. <laughs> hard work. Oh, Bach. Don't we love him? Um, Paul, you, you, you have so many fun ideas. You know, you've taught me so much. Um, you know, bake, we, we've used your bacon and egg breakfast in our notebook beginners, like all of these great little ideas. Have you got just a couple more you can give to teachers who are listening that are just, just ones that you use all the time? I do one that's very popular that goes like this. You know that chord progression? Coldplay. So that chord progression, if you do it in F sharp major, your students can um, uh, improvise over the top. So I'll just play... um, Cool. What are the four chords in F sharp? It's B to C sharp to F sharp and then to D sharp minor. But I always, I much prefer it as E flat, e flat minor. minor. I don't know. Yeah. D sharp. It's like talking about A sharp. Ugh. I know. <laughs> Something icky about it. <laughs> That's cool. What a great, I, I, never, I didn't know that was a, an improv you could do on the black keys. There you go. There you go. Nice yeah. idea. Thank you. Very, very cool. Yeah. And you become a cool teacher because you know Coldplay, let's be honest. Um, <laughs> so, look, uh, how, where can people go to find out more about what you've um, put together? Because it does sound like for teachers who want a one-stop shop done for you, well, the training part, the planning part done for you, obviously they've still got lots of work to do. It sounds like a great opportunity and I can vouch for the quality of the things that you guys put out. It's phenomenal and has great results. So where do people go to find out more? Uh, pianoteachingsuccess.com forward slash group piano. Fantastic. Um, any sort of final wrap-up comments uh, from either of you? might start with uh, Gillian. I'll give you both a chance to, uh, to give your final two cents as to teachers because I know there are, there's two 
there's, there's teachers that are going to be listening that are going to be like, well, um, is it okay that I just want to teach one-on-one? There's going to be teachers that are like, this is really scary, but I really want to do it. All sorts of different thoughts going through people's heads. So, um, Gillian, any sort of final thoughts there? Um, look, of course it's okay if you want to do one-on-one. If you just want to do one-on-one, do that. That's great, you know, like that's completely fine. But um, once you do this, once you, if you do decide you want to learn group piano, if you do it, you're just going to love it so much. There's no turning back. <laughs> once you know how to do it, there's no unknowing it and uh, you'll love it, yeah. Well, I'm sure you'd agree with that sentiment. <laughs> yes. But I would also say don't do it for the money. Um, I do it because you're passionate about it and you're doing it because you believe in it because doing anything just for money is not worth it. I would definitely be doing it, doing this for your students and your benefit. Um, and once you start doing, uh, once you start getting into it, you know, a couple of years down the track, you'll be going, my God, how did I ever not do this in, in the past? Mm. When we get together with our four-day school learners, they're always telling stories. Oh, this person did this and then this person did that. Oh, my God. And even in the studio when they're, they're doing they're always saying, oh, this happened and this happened and it's so exciting. So, yeah, it's that. It's that passion for seeing them. And it's so much fun. So much fun for you. So, yeah, exactly. And there's a progression, you know, like some of our four-day schools have you know, got over 900 students to 1,000 students. You know, they're huge, successful businesses and we're so excited for them. Well, look, thank you so much for both coming on the show. It's been great to catch up. I haven't seen you for a long time. Life gets in the way and gets very busy. So thank you again for coming along. Uh, The link, if you are interested in uh, Gillian and Paul's work, is pianoteachingsuccess.com slash group piano. We'll put it on our show notes page and I will see you guys at, well, NCKP, if not before. Absolutely. Thank you. Thanks so much. Thank you. Well, I hope today's interview has been an inspiration for you if you're possibly considering group teaching. Make sure you go and check out those resources that Paul and Gillian have shared with us today. Uh, It is a big leap if you are going to change to group teaching, so it does help following people who've been there, who've been walked the footsteps already and have had success, and even more, have created frameworks and systems and templates that you can follow so you don't have to rebuild everything from the start. Now, over on the guitar podcast this week with Michael Gumley, we've got episode number 43. It's all about how to tailor your teaching to meet every student's needs in group lessons with Melanie Bowes. Melanie has spoken before with us on this podcast about group teaching for piano. So now she's sharing her thoughts all about group teaching and as it relates to guitar teaching. So head over to topmusic.co slash guitar 043 for more information on that episode. Next week on the podcast, we're continuing to look at our group teaching theme with two teachers from over in Perth, actually, who are creating some group classes for younger students. So we're talking ages four to six and then also below age four. They're having huge success over in Perth and they're putting it together in a package that we're going to be sharing with teachers all around the world. And next week, we'll dive into the story of how they did it, what it is, and give you some tips that you can try in your studios as well if you're interested in teaching those younger age groups in group or individual formats. Until then, I'm Tim Topham and you've been listening to the Integrated Music Teaching Podcast. Thanks so much for joining us. Don't forget to leave that review if you've got just a second. Can't wait to read them. I'll speak to you soon. How do you keep up to date with all the latest trends and research into music education? How do you connect with other teachers around the world and make sure your teaching stays fresh and relevant for students of all ages and stages both now and into the future? I created our Top Music Pro membership to be the one-stop shop for music teaching resources, training, support and community and I'd love for you to come and join us inside. With over 40 comprehensive training courses, hundreds of teaching demonstrations and lesson plans, free monthly sheet music, discounts, and all the business and pedagogy support you could ever need, Top Music Pro is the community you've been looking for. If you're ready to level up your learning from the podcast and join thousands of other teachers in our global network, head over to topmusicpro.com today. If you enjoy this show and want to hear more of our work, be sure to subscribe to this podcast wherever you're listening today. For links and resources mentioned in this episode, visit us at topmusic.co slash podcast or check out the show notes. 
I'm Tim Topham, and this is the Integrated Music Teaching Podcast, a production of Top Music. Thank you so much for listening. Enjoy your week ahead, and I'll catch you next time.